Father, we just thank you so much. Hello, precious partners and friends. This is Pastor Rich in the state of California. We decree and declare that you don't have a problem. All you need is faith in Almighty God. Of course, we have to deal with the storms of life, the winds of opposition, challenges and difficulties. And let me just be honest with you and frank with you. If you are anointed and you're really called of God, the devil is fighting the anointed vessels of God tooth and nail to try to give us the uh, give up, uh, throw in the towel. He's coming against our family, coming against our children, coming against our enterprises, our businesses. But the good news is if we continue to stay in partnership with the word of God, God will give us all of the tools that we need in our arsenal to be victorious and world-class overcomers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So before I make those biblical affirmations, we're going to uh, have a word of prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to get involved in this telecast and those that are listening around the nation and around the country from coast to coast, border to board. A precious Holy Spirit, we invite you in right now. We ask that you would open up our prophetic ears and uh, take the blinders off our eyes to be able to see and let the word work in every area of our life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I don't like to do anything without praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'm going to lift up this big old Bible. You know, I like to lift it up because this is what we teach out of. And we believe that this is God's gift to humanity. This is God's gift to you and me. And can I challenge you when you begin to work the word of God, it will work in every area of your life. And I just want to say this right now. There's some people that's going through some situations and some storms, and you may be even in a furnace of affliction. The Bible says no weapon formed against you past, present, or future is not going to work. Continue to keep your faith, your trust exclusively and totally on an ongoing basis in the finished work of the cross. I'm going to lift up this Bible and I'm going to make some uh, biblical affirmations. I know oftentimes I'm talking pretty fast, so you don't have to repeat them after me, but I just like to say it because I, I like to remind myself of what the word of God says to encourage uh, myself in the Lord as you're being encouraged. I am what the Bible says I am. I can literally do what the word says I can do. Therefore, I say I am not a victim, but I am a victor. I am more than a conqueror. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And as long as I work the word of God in every area of my life and put God first, he will take care of me. Doesn't mean I'm not going to have any problems. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to have any challenges. Doesn't mean that I may not even have any thorns or sicknesses in my body. But with the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to come out victorious in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, I want to talk to you, dearly beloved, for these next few minutes dealing uh, with the subject of soul winning. That's uh, the heart of God. I believe that Christ hasn't came back yet because there's yet still one out there around the nation, around the globe, uh, from coast to coast, city, whatever region you're in, that will say yes to God and no to Satan. Yes to heaven uh, and no to hell. And so uh, I believe that we have to take the church to the streets. Oh, yes, you heard me correctly. Don't you dare turn that dial. We've been teaching for some time. The church has never been a real estate building, and there's nothing wrong with lands and real estate building, but the church, according to the new covenant, is the tabernacle of God, the temple of God. Your bodies are the temple of God, and his spirit and his presence dwells within you in the name of the Lord. And there's so many people that are dying, uh, uh, so many Christians that are dying. There's so many people uh, that don't even know the Lord that's dying. And we've shared this on several occasions. If there was a fire in your neighborhood. I don't care if you didn't like your neighbor and you didn't speak to your neighbor. If you had any type of compassion dealing with humanity, you would go knock on that door of that neighbor and warn them, hey, your house is on fire. Why? Because you don't want anyone in that household to be destroyed. You don't want anyone uh, to die. And that's the same mindset, uh, child of God, that we should have when it comes to soul winning. All that fancy word soul winning means is to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And oftentimes people say, you're always talking about the goodness of the Lord Jesus. Well, that's not good. 
If you make a mistake and you repent and come clean with God, that he will not turn your mistakes into miracles. What's not good if you're having family problems or challenges in your relationship that he won't help you and assist you? Maybe you have been through divorce. You can bounce back from divorce. Maybe you have been through bankruptcy and you've lost your business. With the Lord Jesus Christ, you can yet overcome and write a new chapter of your life in the name of Jesus. So remember, I want to say this before we dive into this word today, what you focus on determines your feelings. And that's why we don't want to focus on the negative things we're going through. We don't want to focus on the injustices or or the trauma and all that stuff is real, but we have to get better and not bitter in the name of the Lord. Why don't you just open up your mouth and just say that? I believe as you say that as as an act of faith, something supernaturally will take place in your life. You say, well, brother, what kind of message? medical evidence you have. I have no medical evidence. I only have supernatural proof. And this is what this Bible is, is a supernatural Bible that works in your life when you allow it to work in your life. And so the question is, why did Jesus come to planet Earth? Well, I want to tell you why, what he didn't come to planet Earth to do. He did not come to be cool. He did not come uh, to just sit in some uh, building and just wear some robe or, or, or some chain. And again, there's nothing wrong with robes. There's nothing wrong with chain. I, I like diversity styles are different. I think people should drive the cars. God has blessed them to be able to drive, dress whatever style you want. So I'm not one of those that bash, but the point is Christ would, if he was here today, he would be about snatching souls from the clutches of the enemy. He would not be on a love boat. He would be on a war ship in some of the most dangerous areas of our life, telling people about the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think we got to take the church to the streets. We're seeing law, I mean, p- policemen just being shot, cold blooded. I was talking to a friend of mine in the Los Angeles area that retired over 30 years in, of uh, LAPD. And I, I've been telling him, I said, man, you can't, you continue to spit on the Bible. You continue to say the church is not essential. You continue to say prayer is not essential and God will begin to move his hand back and we will see lawlessness and anarchy like never before. And he even stated he's never seen it as bad as it is. And you know what he said? Jesus is the solution uh, for an evil heart. And that's a person that worked the dangerous streets, even in those arenas. So let me say this, Jesus is the answer for hurting humanity. If you're sick, God is able to heal you. If you have a mental problem, God is able to regulate your mind. And I decree and declare a sound mind right now. Somebody's listening and the devil is tormenting your mind. He's telling you to give up. He's telling you, you can't make it. The devil is a liar. And God says, you're going to have peace, the peace of God, peace with God, and even peace with those that you're dealing with. So the question is, why did Jesus come to planet earth? And I'm going to go through the gospels very quickly and uh, just read because in Matthew, uh, Mark, Luke, John, even in the book of Acts, he tells us why he comes. So if you would open up your Bible and I'm reading from uh, the King James Version, but whatever translation or paraphrase that you want to read from, that is fine. Uh, First of all, in Matthew chapter 28, I want to go there very quickly. Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to read verses 18 through 20. We call this the Great Commission, not the Great uh, Suggestion, but it was the Great Command. Everybody should win souls. Because I hear some people say, well, you know, I'm not an evangelist. Every human being should win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to beat people up and some of the crazy witnessing I see out there, people blowing horns on the corners of the streets of America saying you're going to hell. That's so. I would never serve God hearing that kind of soul winning. Listen, the best way to witness is to let your light shine before men and they see that there's something different in you. When people are fighting and arguing and they look at you and say, there's something different. Uh, I noticed you didn't engage that and you just smile and just, uh, you know, later on begin to witness to him. So in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, listen to what the word of the Lord says, dearly beloved. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power. And in the King James Version, there's different meanings for the Greek word power. Uh, And the word power here literally means authority. So Jesus, he says, he says unto them, all authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. And then he says, go ye therefore, check this out, and teach all nations or make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I don't know about you, dearly beloved, but God has given us authority. 
There's nowhere in Scripture from Genesis to Revelation, from Revelations to Genesis, where you see Satan has authority. Now, he does have power. Uh, he does uh, operate in witchcraft and demonology. I believe that. My grandmother was from Louisiana, and she, trust me, she understood witchcraft very clearly, as, uh, you know, before she got converted uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So I believe that. But the, we have authority over demons and devils through the power of the gospel. So we don't have have no reason to be afraid to go outside of our homes, uh, to get on the local news, uh, the bus, or, or, or even the, uh, in the local areas to be able to tell people about the goodness of the Lord. In Mark chapter 16, I want to go there very quickly, Mark chapter 16, because I want you to get these tools uh, and we want to equip you through the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to uh, hit the streets for the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been hitting the streets for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's so many groups out there. We need the right groups out there that that's teaching respect, that's teaching honor, that will respect the office of the president, respect all parties. Remember, Jesus, God, our God is not a Republican. He's not a Democrat. He's not a Tea Party. He's not a progressive. Listen, he loves all the parties. God is a spirit, and them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In Mark chapter 16, verse number 15, and listen to what he says, and go ye into all the world and preach or proclaim or publish the gospel. The gospel is good news. If you're going to hell, how many know he can stop you from going to hell? It, hallelujah. If you're on the wrong side, how many know he can put you on the right side? He says, he says, go and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, notice it doesn't say sins, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons and devils. We need some people of God that's not afraid of demons and devils and start casting them devils out of the, you know, every day I've been casting the devil. I go through my home because the devil, he's fighting. He fights our family. He fights the ministry. And you know what? I, I don't bind him. I cast that devil out of my marriage. I cast that devil out of my children. I cast that devil out of the business. I cast that devil out of our city, cast that devil out of that nation. Dearly beloved, we must learn how to cast that devil out in the matchless name of Jesus. Don't let the devil bully you. Don't let the devil beat you up. It's time to rise up in the Holy Ghost. Open up your mouth. Go through your home. Go through your condo. Go through your apartment. Go through your property and cast that devil out and loose the peace of God. Loose the joy of God and start prophesying over your household what you want God to do in Jesus name. Amen. Then he goes on. And I love this next part here. He says, and they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Check this out. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In other words, so he gives us signs and wonders. Not so we can uh, spiritualize on one another and see who can out pray one another, who can out preach one another, who can out sing one another. That's foolishness. That's religiosity and legalism. God, it's called diversity of gifts. God uses us all different as channels and instruments, but we're all part of the big global body. There's no racism in the body. The solution for racism is repentance and receiving Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, because there's no race. There's the human race and God created all the races and he's trying to bring the people of God together so we can love one another and we can build one another up and we can encourage one another and we can forgive one another in the name of the Lord. Let's go over to Luke chapter 24, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Luke chapter 24. He gives us the message that we ought to preach. There's a lot of messages out there that's being preached, but how many know we have to preach the right message? Glory to God. How many know that if you're sick, you know, you don't need a Bentley, you don't need a Rolls Royce. And again, I'm not against none of that. Uh, you know, you can have that as long as it doesn't have you and you have it. But if you're sick, how's that going to help you? If you got an incurable disease, how is your money in the bank going to heal you? Come on, Steve Jobs, who created the wonderful product that all of us use. He says, I don't know what kind of monster I'm creating. But you know what? If money could heal. Trust me, he would still be healed here today in that there's some things that money cannot do that only God can do. So in verse uh, Luke chapter 24, 
verse number 46 through 48. I'm trying to slow down. I get excited when I start talking about soul winning because I don't, we don't just talk about it. We actually do it. We take the church on wheels to the unchurch in the name of the Lord. Verse number 46 it says, and he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer. So check this out. The first thing we got to make sure that's in our message that we're preaching is the cross. People need to hear, when we talk about the cross, I'm not talking about the cross you wear. I'm talking about what the cross is symbolic to. Most people think the cross, well, the cross is, is it, it represents shame. No, that is absolutely not true. The cross represents the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, and the exaltation of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, everything is included in the finished work of the cross. Then he goes on and says, and to rise from the dead, listen to this, beloved, on the third day. So the resurrection has got to be in our message. We don't serve some dead God. Somebody said, well, I don't serve the God you serve because he's a white Jesus. Listen, I don't know what Bible they're reading. This is not a Western gospel. This is not a black gospel. This is not a white gospel. This is not a Native American gospel. This is a whosoever will gospel in the name of the Lord. And our God is not racist. If he was, believe me, I would not serve him. He's colorblind. He doesn't see the way we see. Uh, and we've got to change the way we see because God looks at us as spirits. Man is a body that lives in a spirit that possesses a soul and that soul consists of the mind, the will, and the emotions. And we've got to take uh, control of our emotions and we've got to be able to take charge of our mind, cast that devil out of our mind and say, mind, line up with the word of God. Anytime the virus of doubt and unbelief tries to enter your spirit, you've got to reject it, renounce it, take charge of your thought life, get rid of that stinking thinking and say, I am a believer and not a doubter. I'm standing on the promises of God in the name of the Lord. And then verse number 47, and then he goes on and says, and that repentance, so repentance has got to be in the message. Oh yes, you got to repent. Don't let the devil blackmail you. If you make a mistake, just authentically repent, come clean, and he will wash your sins away. The Bible says if we confess our sins in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 9, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I don't know how anybody can be on television, radio, and be so self-righteous with a self-righteous spirit like they have never even sinned. Even on your best day, let me put scripture on you, Romans 3 and 10 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That same chapter, verse number 10 says, there's none righteous. Uh, no, not one, but him. What makes us righteous in the mind of God is by keeping Christ as the object of our faith on an ongoing basis. So he says, re re repentance and remission of sins, listen to this, should be preached. So he's talking about forgiveness. He brings forgive forgiveness has got to be in the message. So you see it here, Christ, resurrection, repentance, forgiveness in the name. Listen, among the nations beginning at Jerusalem and listen, and ye are his witnesses of these things. We have witnesses of people where Christ has literally forgiven us. So he gives us, he gives us the authority He in, in Matthew and in, in Mark. He gives us signs and wonders and Luke. He gives us the message that we ought to preach. And then when we go to John, he gives us the anointing because you don't want to just have intellectualism. You need the anointing if you're going to survive in the hour and times that we live in. And the anointing is not screaming and hollering. And, and there's nothing wrong with doing that if that's uh, if it's of the Holy Ghost. But let me say this. The anointing is the power of God in your life to be able to cope with any situation that the enemy brings your way. The anointing, uh, when it's upon your life and it's been manifested in your life, it literally cancels every satanic assignment that the enemy brings against you. And right now, there's some uh, people that are listening under the sound of my voice, and it seemed like uh, witchcraft prayers have been coming against you. Um, uh, divination and spells and curse words and even uh, religiosity and uh, I call it charismatic witchcraft and spiritual voodoo even in the church has been spoken against you. The anointing cancels it by the blood of Jesus in the name of the Lord. Satan, take your nasty hands off that kingdom family. Take your nasty hands off that marriage. Take your nasty hands off those children. We decree and declare that our families will be saved. Our children will be saved in the name of the Lord. Let me say this because there's somebody that's been going through some, I call it satanic uh, a warfare. 
And we all go through warfare. We will never outgrow warfare, my mentor told me. So you got to learn how to fight. The, the devil's either going to punk you or you're going to have to learn how to fight using the word of God. I, I got to say this, and I sense this in, uh, uh, an urgency in the Holy Spirit as the Lord is prompting my spirit. You are not responsible for the decisions that your family member makes. I want to say that one more time, because a lot of times we carry burdens that God never intended it for us to carry. Your you're not responsible for your children's decisions. You're not responsible for your spouse's uh, decision. This is an individual affair, and that's why God says, "Work out your own salvation with fear and." And with trembling, continue to pray for them in the name of the Lord. All right. So in John chapter 20, listen to what God says, starting at verse number 21 through 23. Then said Jesus to them, peace be unto you. Or, or listen to this. He says, as my father has sent me or anointed me. That's what the New Testament Greek uh, text says. Listen, even so I send you or anoint you. So when God calls you to hit the streets of the nations or wherever, I've been out of the country with uh, uh, Lassie, Pete Lass, uh, uh, Sumrall before he died. And I have been over to um, uh, the Middle East, uh, baptized with David, that wonderful great man of Dr. David Sumrall who's pastoring Dr. Lester Sumrall, the late, listen, those men and women of God believe the word of God. They, they, they're, oh, I mean, they have seen martyrs, people who have lost their lives before preaching the gospel in some of those third world countries, but they're still feeding the hungry, still going out there winning souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've been in the States, one of my mentors who have won hundreds of thousands of souls, even in, the, uh, in our area and region and America, and God wants to use you. Yes, to tell somebody, and it starts within your home. It starts within your family, and it's time to not talk about it. It's time to do it uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So check this out, verse number 22. And when he had sent this, he breathed on them. Now, people have turned this in, taken this out of contact, and made breathing ministries. <laughs> That's not what he meant. This was, this was symbolic. <laughs> this was a point to this. <laughs> this was some teaching to this. He breathed on them and says, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And, and whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. And then uh, in Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, he gives us power. Let's go over there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts chapter 1, and verse number 8. Most of the time uh, in the body of Christ, I've seen people that are very strong in the walls. They can shout, they can dance, they can sing, but uh, they walk right past people that are smoking blunts. They'll walk right past people uh, that are on the streets uh, talking crazy. And I believe that God has given us power to cast out demons and devils. There's some people that are demon possessed and the devil needs to be cast out of them. I'm not talking about people with mental illness or uh, that go through chemicals being out balanced because I do believe in doctors and so forth. But there's some people that are demon possessed and only Jesus can set them free by the power of the Holy Ghost. So actually, Acts chapter one, verse number, it says, but ye shall receive power. That's that deuteronomous power, dynamite power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the other most parts of the world. So remember, Jesus has given us everything that we need to take the church to the streets, to, to, to be the church without walls. See, people that have been witnessing, we know how to navigate in the system that we're in right now because we've always taken the church wherever we go. If you're at the airport, if wherever, if you're at a dentist, you're going to see your dentist, but God is using you to witness to the dentist. What, whatever the assignment is, you got to do it in the name of the Lord. Let me give you seven major reasons. I, I literally have 50, but I'm going to give you seven. Seven major reasons Jesus came. Number one, John 10 and 10. The Bible says the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. And when you are anointed, oh, I'm telling you, the devil wants to rob you of your marriage, rob you of your family. He wants to steal your kids. He wants to rob you of the joy of God, rob you of the peace of God. And a lot of times we think people are our enemy, but we're fighting a spirit. Now the devil works through people. We know that he can even get into animals. Uh, uh, when, when, when the demons were cast out and they got into those hogs, come on, we know the demons can get into uh, domestic animals, but God can deliver. God can set free. So Jesus said, I've come that you may have a life. Check this out. He never leaves us bleeding and have it more abundant. 
abundantly. So the first reason why he came is so you can live the abundant lifestyle. Not so you'll live like King Tut and think you're better than other folks. Everything that he's blessed you with, everything he's prospered you with. Remember, it's only been loaned to you. Your children has been loaned to you. Uh, your relationships have been loaned to you. Your finances have been loaned to you. Everything that you have and all that you possess has been loaned to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, Luke chapter 19, verse number 10, Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost. He did not come for those that are already whole. He came for those that are sick, those that are dealing with coronaviruses and other viruses and incurable diseases. If you have an incurable disease, I've got good news. Luke 1 and 37 says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Our God's specialty is the impossible in the name of the Lord. Mark chapter 9, verse number 23. Jesus said, if thou can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. John chapter 14. Verse number 13 and verse number 14, he says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. You go to the 15th chapter, verse number seven, he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, whatever you ask, it shall be done. The problem is we're not asking. And when we do ask, we're not being specific. We say, Lord, bless me. You're already blessed. You're, you should have said, Lord, I need $40 and 36. Be specific so God can do the miraculous in your life. And number three, in Matthew chapter one, verse number 21, he came to seek and to save that which uh, was lost. People are lost. People are hurting like never before. People are uh, anxiety attacks. And you're talking to somebody that has a PhD in pain. When it comes to trauma, when it comes to uh, painful experience, listen, you're not talking to a rookie. I'll look right in that camera. Glory to God. I can testify that there's some things that only the Lord Jesus Christ can heal you of. You can go see the best of the best. And all they have to offer is surgery and medication, but they never deal with the heart of the matter like forgiveness and dealing with uh, internal issues that only God can deliver you from. And so Jesus comes to save us from our sins. Now, I know some people say, well, I don't have no sins. I heard somebody say that the other day. Hey, brother Schumer, I don't have any sins. Well, I said, I'm not, wasn't in that category, uh, my dear brother. I said, I had a lot of sins and he paid my sin debt on Calvary in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four in Luke chapter four and verse number 43, he came to preach the the kingdom of God, not this legalism. I hear people all the time, holiness or hell, holiness or hell. It's, you know, what you wear now. And I'm not knocking that. My grandmother was old school and my grandmother didn't even wear pants, but she even knew holiness had nothing to do with dressing. Holiness is a way of lifestyle. Holiness is produced from the finished work of the cross. Cause you can be dressed up on the outside and wear no makeup and be full of hell on the inside. Mean and green say, Amen. Uh, holiness is what God produces. And God says, be ye holy for I am holy. I, I hear people say, be ho holy, 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 holy. Well, if you're going to be holy, make sure you support people that don't burn up the Bible. If you're going to be holy, make sure you support people uh, that's not against what this Bible teaches uh, in the name of the Lord. I love you. I speak that with love in Jesus name. Number, number five. Listen, John chapter three, verse number 16. We call it the, the heart of the gospel for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And with that being said, you got to understand our God is not a Republican. Our God is not a Democrat. Our God is not a Tea Party or a progressive. He loves the Republican Party. He loves the Democrat Party. He loves the Tea Party. He loves the progressive. He loves all humanity. I don't care who you are, what you've done, how bad you've done it. That was the purpose for him going to the cross to pay our sin debt. And he does not want any of us to perish, but all of us to be saved. Now, the question can be argued, is everybody going to be saved? But we know uh, the, it's his will. But he says, as it is in heaven on earth. But a lot of things that's happening in heaven, uh, that's not happening on earth, but that's his will. Number six, uh, John three and verse number 17, he says, he, I came not to condemn the world, but to save the world. Let me say something here. Jesus does not condemn. 
The Holy Spirit, Jesus, when he brings the work, that's conviction you're feeling. The devil brings condemnation. Jesus brings conviction. And when conviction comes to the believer, listen, we make the necessary adjustments. We repent and we line up with the word of God and keep moving forward in the name of the Lord. Number seven, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse number 8, Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. And if he came to destroy the works of the enemy, you don't have to do the destroying. All you've got to do is accept what he did at Calvary and start walking in his statutes, start walking in his commands, start working the word of God in every area of your life. Faith, remember, faith is like a muscle. The more you work it, the stronger you get. Is there going to be mistakes on the journey? Of course there's going to be mistakes. We learn from those mistakes. Remember, life is a life of lesson. We learn from it and we get better and we move forward and we preach the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me just read a few statistics that I looked at the other day. Over one, uh, almost uh, 1.5 million abortions per, per year. And you know that, I mean, look, I mean, and, and the, I have a son, he actually wrote a book taking on the legacy of Christ. Uh, the doctors literally told me to abort him. And I was just learning my faith. Thank God for that Mississippi uh, pastor, Dad Reynolds, that led me to the Lord. And I said, ma'am, I reject that. And I don't receive that. I just knew that wasn't right based upon the teeth. I was not going to abort that, that baby. And as a result, yes, uh, he, he graduated. They said he would never walk. He's talking and he wrote a book. And I want you to get that book and we'll have more information uh, where you can line up. But you know what? We were teaching him how to work faith. We were teaching him how to work the word of God. We never treated him like he had a disability, even though he had a thorn. I call it a thorn. We all have thorns if we're honest. Some's visible, some is invisible. But if you going to pack the anointing of God, there's going to be some kind of thorn in your life. Over one uh, 0.5 runaways per year, over 1.5 suicides, and the rate is even higher right now. People are giving up and throwing in the towel, and the hope is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Over, listen, 1 million in mental clinics. And again, if you have mental, if your chemicals are off balance, I do believe in doctors. My, my wife has two aunts that were medical MDs that have retired, but there's some uh, mental challenges I believe people need to be delivered from the word of God. Over 1. million divorces per year. And I'm talking about it in the church. That's why I never, I never come against anybody in the church because if you ain't been married, don't talk to us about anything. If you anoint it and you're packing the enemy, you can be victorious for years and the enemy will come in and try to destroy your marriage in the name of the Lord. But listen, we're praying for you. Continue to try to work the word. Do your best and let God do the rest and keep on moving. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, over 1 million in prison. And let me say this, we're, uh, it's amazing how we're locking up preachers for preaching the gospel that's trying to get people to respect uh, law enforcement, respect the office of those that are in rule of us, and we're letting out career criminals. Now, I do believe in prison reform if you've changed, but if folks telling you they ain't going to change and you're going to let them out to me, that's insanity on parade, and I can't comprehend that. Maybe Maybe some of y'all can help me understand that a lot better. Uh, over 10 million alcoholics uh, uh, currently. And I'm going to tell you this. If you ain't got the word, see, it, listen, people use dope because they don't have hope. And when you don't, when you lose your hope, I don't care what ministry gift you have. I don't care how anointed and called you. Are. Listen, you'll be popping pills. You've heard me share my story when I, I was ran over uh, uh, by a vehicle and I was in that trauma unit for seven days at UC Day. Listen, I was addicted. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I was addicted uh, to that pain medicine. I was about ready to fight the doctors before. That's before Michael Jackson died. That's before Prince and all that other stuff. He's like, I'm not going to sit here and watch you die. And I'm going to tell you this. It was a fight because when you're addicted, boy, it, it's something else. So I can identify that. But let me say this. God can even help you even in that arena uh, in the name of the over one million drug addicts in the name of the number two cause of death among people people under the age of 25 is suicide. Oh, every 30 seconds, a teen attempts a suicide. The number one cause of death among people under the age of 25 is alcohol related. 
over half the alcoholics are U.S. teenagers. Now, I did have an alcoholic a uh, person that was drunk literally ran, I mean, oh my God, was, uh, messed, hit me in the back. And uh, matter of fact, I had a pastor with me, Apostle Daryl uh, 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 Wilson, uh, who used to travel with Miles Monroe uh, over in the, and he was hit. He, thank God for prayer. Thank God for the power of God. But that he said that devil was trying to kill us. It wasn't the person, but it was a demon trying to take us out. And I'm still here, as Dorinda Clark said, by the grace of God, by the mercy. The devil should have took me out while he had a chance. Because every time I get up, I'm going to encourage men and women. I'm going to build up men and women. I'm going to let you know I don't care what you've been through. Glory to God. You can bounce back from any setback. God will turn your tragedies into triumphs. God will turn your battles and defeats into victories with your traumas in, I'm talking about into triumphs when you put him first in the name of the Lord. So I'm telling you, I'm still here on an assignment to build you up. Whatever you're going through, dearly beloved, don't you quit. Don't you throw in the towel. I've seen people healed of coronavirus. Whatever virus you have, even if we leave here, it's still graduation time because we're pilgrims passing through. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you're listening and, and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Well, first of all, if you're going to learn how to live the abundant lifestyle and be able to master your reactions and to be able to handle pressure and, and challenges. Listen, we all go through problems. We all go through a difficult situation. I would have gave up a long time ago, but the word of the Lord has given me strength to help me. Greater is he that is in you and me than he that is in the world. Greater is the power of God inside you to be able to help you in the name of the Lord, but he can't help you dearly beloved. If you're trying to run your life your own way, he can't help you. If you think you're your own God, he can't help you. If you think just education is the way I, and I, and we promote education. I'm praying for a brother right now that was accepted into UCLA and I pray for him, send him texts on a daily basis. Listen, but I'm going to tell you this. I know a lot of people that are getting degrees that can't handle satanic pressure because Jesus is not Lordship of their life. My grandparents was from the Jim Crow laws. They didn't have even a high school diploma, but you know what? They could handle pressure and they were better and not bitter in Jesus name. If you would like to accept this Prince of Peace, this King of Kings, this mighty God in your life. It's not hard. We're not asking you to join a church. We're not asking you to go to some real estate building. We're asking you to accept the God that authored this Bible, the Prince of Peace. I know we hear a lot about peace, but there's never going to be peace until the Prince of Peace is at the table. All you've got to do is just accept him according to Romans 10 and 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why don't you just pray this simple prayer with me? Close your eyes. If you, if you don't feel comfortable, keep your eyes open. Just, but just pray. It's a prayer of faith. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all of my sins. I believe you died for my sins. And I renounce every demon and devil out of my life. And I invite you as lordship of my life. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that on the third day, God the Father raised him from the dead. And right now, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart, into my life as Lord and Savior. Dearly beloved, if you prayed that in sincerity, only you and God knows you prayed that. If you prayed in faith, you will, if you were to die today, you would spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what you need after you accepted Christ, you need to find your Bible teaching, Bible believing ministry, wherever it's at, wherever you're comfortable, that's going to teach the laws of God, going to teach the word of God and help you so you can be victorious in the name of the Lord. Remember, there's the person of Jesus that deals with eternity. And there's the principle of Jesus, which is taught in the word that deals with how to be successful in the earth realm. We love you. We're praying for you. Continue to pray for our nation. Continue to pray for our country. Continue to pray for our ministry leaders, bishops, and pastors everywhere that God would make us one. Love you. Have a glorious day.
Christ shows the world in the twinkling of an eye that he owns it, but you already know that. Or if not, then you're a skeptic, but you better get a ride and get left behind. Like the best selling paperback novel. When Christ comes, you won't have time to grovel, no time to plead. But best believe, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. He's Lord. From east to west, north and south, don't be stressed. Act now and get blessed and have eternal Yo, life. coming like a leaf in the night, so take flight over soldiers. As we can see to the light, escaping our pain, destruction, pain, and misery. I can hear the reaper show when it's out. Always swing, swing, swing. Knock the right off of your feet, but you'll be stored in the fire. Where you're stored with the weed. Well, the yo, they'll be gnashing the teeth. The ride to shine for, cause we mirror the king. Are you sleeping on your wake if you're not to get ready? Cause you'll be coming in the clouds, so you better be ready. I got grace in my heart, so I know that I'm ready. And I heard hell is hot, so you better get ready. Are you sleeping on your wake if you're not to get ready? Let's worship in heaven, nuke our enemies camp up One day I'm going